Hello, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute, and I'm here with our CEO, Peter Diaz. Hi. Today, with World Mental Health Day just around the corner, we wanted to take a moment to sit down and take a look at the current state of affairs when it comes to mental health in the world right here, right now, today in October 2022. So Peter and I are going to be diving into some pretty big questions here about well-being of the planet from a very global perspective, right down to personal well-being and what you as an individual can do for yourself and your communities. So from the macro right down to the micro and everything in between, it's a very broad spectrum and we're excited about that. But before we dive in, we do want to acknowledge a few things. Firstly, Peter and I come from very different backgrounds in pretty much every way possible. Besides being different genders, coming from different cultural backgrounds, uh, we have different personalities, different life experiences. We also have different training professionally. I'm a licensed psychologist, but please don't hold that against me. I've also studied in a range of different fields beyond the scopes of traditional psychology, so I incorporate a lot of that into my perspective. Whereas Peter's professional background is as a clinical social worker, so he takes a more systems approach to looking at what things support and perhaps detract from mental health and well-being. And he also has his personal life experience having been diagnosed and recovered from a severe mental illness. Bipolar. Bipolar disorder. Yeah. So with those differences, we'll incorporate that into our discussion. So just in case you're worried that perhaps we'll interrupt each other. It will happen. Talk over the top of each other. <laughs> perhaps even disagree. It will happen. And it's okay. In fact, we're in favor of differences. We love diversity. And that includes diversity of opinions and being able to look at those and discuss them. In fact, we think it's crucial that people these days are able to have different perspectives and opinions and be able to have respectful conversations about them. We need the conversation. Yeah. yeah. So do we have permission to speak freely? Well, yes, we do. We're giving ourselves permission. <laughs> so let's dive in. And I want right. to start with the very first question. Big one for you, Peter. What is the current state of mental health in the ooh, world? Oh, I knew right. you were going to ask me that one. So I, I prepared for that oh, one. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, yes. I had a little, very quick look, although I was already aware aware of, of the state. I just wanted to have some look at some studies right mm -hmm. now of what's going on. The UK, there's a UK study, the UCL COVID social study, and it says that it suggests that the cumulative effect of repeated pandemic waves and lockdowns may have led to an increased and prolonged negative effect on the mental health and well-being of some groups within the population. And I want to highlight that bit of the prolonged negative effect. Yeah. We haven't had necessarily that happen before as, as badly as it's happening now. So th this is from the UK. In the US, a very um, worrying finding is one in five children will have a mental illness by the age of 18. Again, we haven't had this so bad, but for the last two and a half years, it has gotten worse. Mm. In fact, we have a very good um, video on our channel. You can watch after this one, of course. Uh, and it's an interview that you did with Laurie Van she's a specialist on self-harm yeah. and if you have girls in your family whereas nieces or daughters or anything like that there's an epidemic there's an mm. epidemic of self-harm with young girls and she makes some very interesting points so that's something mm. good to, to watch and now Australia of course we love Australia throughout 2020 and 2021 research has gathered evidence revealing heightened psychological distress during the pandemic mm. now remember for some people it hasn't finished and we're going into different type of collective pain now, yeah. which um, in some cases is financial. Uh, we're looking at financial and also we're still being scared uh, around the physical stuff. And there was a rise in the use of mental health services, which continues and an increase in psychological distress during 2020. Yeah. All right. So it doesn't look good. And um, there's always a bit of a delay with the research that happens. So yeah. we're getting some 2020 data now. And I, I would love to say that we have improved, but we haven't. If anything, the anecdotal and the studies show that it's getting worse. Yeah. Uh, in some countries, there has been an increase of suicide. In other countries, it doesn't seem to have uh, correlated with that. Um, but definitely what is very worrying is that young people have been particularly yeah. affected by this yeah. two and a half 
years. Oh. So as adults, um, it's good that we listen to this and we do something about it. It's not, it's not about you anymore. It's not about you. It's about the next generation. Yeah. What kind of a world are we leaving for them? And, and this, is, this is my concern here. And this is why I'm excited about having a, yeah. a completely frank and honest discussion. If it offends me, it doesn't really matter. If it offends you, I'm sorry, it's not about you. It's about how do we help other people? And everybody doesn't think the same. Well, I, I was just going to say, I think one of the challenges is we really, we want it to be over so much yes. that we're saying, you know, it's all good. It's all finished now. Let's move on, get on with life. But this research is showing that prolonged effect. It's, and it, as you said, it's yeah. still, there are still restrictions happening in some places. And even those that don't have restrictions anymore, there's still a healing to be done from everything that people have been through. And, and sometimes we can't even articulate what we've been through. It takes some time. So yeah. I, I think it's we need to be really careful not to say everything's fine now. Let's move on, get over it. Yeah, and you make a very good point, especially with guys, with men. Um, it's well known. It takes us a couple of years to to work out what's going on before we can talk about it. So mm. People say, why don't they go to therapy and talk about it? Well, some people don't work like that, especially if they're, if they're men. Uh, sometimes they take a lot longer to be able to trust a person to know that when they speak, they're going to be listened to. Um, so, yeah, we've got to give them time. So what do you think are the biggest challenges facing workplaces, communities and individuals right now? Well, the one we're talking about, for example, it's a very big challenge. How do you talk about things that are so difficult to talk about uh, in, in, an, in an area where uh, sometimes people get offended and we need to talk about those things, even if I get offended, mm -hmm. it's still an important conversation because the fact that we tell people to shut up it's not good enough. They still mm. think and they still feel the way that they do. So we need to encourage conversation. We need to encourage differences of opinion in order to have a collective well-being. Yeah. But There's too much focus on the individual well-being and not the collective one. Yeah. Whereas we, we forget sometimes that it is a, it's a, it's a happy society that produces happy individuals. Mm. You know, mm. um, of course the reverse is also sometimes true, but we have, we're missing that point. I mean, that's one of the important points that we're missing because th there are other things that are impacting in in our world right now so, and so it's, hang on just to just to yeah. capture what you're saying here so one of the biggest challenges then is this trend where people can't speak is that what you're saying yeah like, absolutely we, we tell people if you have a mental health issue make sure that you talk but only say the things that i want to hear hmm. They are politically, example? they're politically correct, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, if I'm being bothered by something that is not politically correct, we don't want to know because that makes you a bad person. Mm. So political correctness is a big yes, problem. Yes, political for correctness is a huge problem yeah. for mental health and well-being. I'm not saying, I'm not saying. Obviously, I'm not saying that we should just go and insult people or offend them because we can. No, no that's no, ridiculous. No, no. We shouldn't do that. Yeah. But we also shouldn't hold back from from giving a gift of our wisdom, of our opinion, mm -hmm. simply on the basis that someone else has put a rule that we shouldn't talk about it. It's it's actually, voicelessness yeah. is a big element mm. of mental illness. Absolutely. You know, so when people feel they can't talk, that is really bad for their mental health. Yeah. And I guess the challenge is that how have we got to this point? I think it's with good intentions. I think we don't want to upset people. We want to look after people. We want to support well-being. So then we start to create rules about how to do that and we shoot ourselves in the foot. Yeah. And, and I, the thing that's coming up for me is, you know, what I was told as a child, I'm sure many people were, yeah. um, and what we've shared with our son, you know, that little saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Which is a good and, saying. And it's interesting, mm. like, when did words become dangerous? <laughs> Yeah. To the point where now we can't say words, we can't speak, we can't express. And, and, and we know taboo words are not not useful. They do limit the human spirit. And it's not um, just words, obviously, it's ideas and concepts oh, and, yes. and that 
debate and yes. discussion. So we have a we have reached a point, uh, especially through the pandemic, we've yeah. seen a lot of censorship. Yeah. And censorship is just basically means you have an opinion I don't want to hear, therefore I will call it a name and you shut up. Yeah. Well, this is really, really, really wrong from a mental health perspective and from an ethical perspective yeah. to shut a person up yeah. because they don't fit into what we want to hear. Yeah. And that in, in therapy, what we do in therapy, when we when we are having therapy with clients, is we allow them to say anything. Yeah. Because it is in the process yeah. of saying anything yeah. that that people process and digest yeah. things and they get better. Yeah. So as a society, it's very much the same. We well, need to be able to talk about things in order to improve our collective mental health. And that's what makes it a safe space. The fact that you can uh, exactly. say anything here, this is a safe space. A beanbag like and that. a teddy bear is not the safe space it is the ability to be able to talk yeah. about things yeah so what do you think are the biggest challenges that well we besides are the one i mentioned before yeah i think one of the ones that i'm very worried about at the moment is um trauma it's become really popular mm -hmm. it's almost like a fashion it we had for about a decade the fashion of bipolar disorder mm -hmm. diagnosis mm -hmm. now we have the fashion of trauma and people are fascinated by trauma mm -hmm. because they think the trauma is something that happens to you and you have nothing to do with it mm -hmm. um, which it can't be further but from the you truth. Saying, you're not saying that we haven't been through something traumatic, right? No, we have been collectively through something traumatic. My concern is that people feel that they are completely at the mercy yeah. of events, yeah. uh, whereas what we know from psychology, uh, thorough yeah. psychological studies, is that trauma is a process yeah. in which the person has to participate in it. Mm. So, for, for example, I'll give you an example. Yeah. If, if a person is already feeling depressed, and something happens yeah. that is that is really negative and they have a reaction to that, that can be then traumatic. Mm -hmm. But if that person is feeling happy and something really negative happens, it's very rare for an individual yeah. to, to, to experience trauma. Well, the research is showing that about 70, forget pandemic, apart from that, before that, 75% of people will go through something that could be considered a potentially traumatic yeah. ex event or experience, and but not. only a minute proportion of those people will go on to have a post-traumatic stress response, exactly. for example. And what I'm seeing now is there's a lot of people believing that they are that minority. Yeah. That they are that minority. Yeah. And, and that is concerning because it, it is quite rare. Yeah. It is not the norm. You know, most people will not experience trauma for the rest of their lives. Sometimes when you're feeling bad today, it's not because you experienced trauma before. It's because you're feeling bad today. Yeah. Today is a shitty yeah. day. And, you know, and sometimes you do have bad days. Don't you think that there can be a tendency sometimes for people to kind of point score with like with the victim you know Absolutely. mentality oh this happened to me well, we, yes. now I get attention now I get support there's there's a need for that sort of drama yeah. I guess and so and the sometimes more we've taken the, negatives you can come up with <laughs> and, 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 and in, 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 in psychology validation is good yes that's true most of the time, not always. Hmm. You gotta be careful how much you validate yeah. someone. If if somebody is caught up in a drama and you validate the drama, hmm. then you get more drama, hmm. and that's not good for the person. Yeah. If you're validating a person's trying to get better, if you're validating a person's experience, that that's okay. Hmm. If you're listening to their story, that's all right. Yeah. If you do it once, if you do it twice. If you do it ten hmm. times. That's not good anymore. Mm. Now we have a person that is in a cycle, reliving, mm. or sometimes what I've seen, and you yeah. have seen that as well, yeah. I'm sure, is that they're creating their own trauma by repeating a story yeah. and making them even worse than when it happened. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes therapists have got a lot to answer for. That's true. Because they've created, they've created salient points in people's minds about something that happened in the past, which didn't bother them at the time. And they've talked, well, this is why you have a yeah. crappy life today because of that. And, and that's forever. one of the things. And yes. forever more because you can't go yeah. back and undo the past. And, and, and that's one of the things that I've seen that is yeah. it's really dangerous and, and it's impacting workplaces so This conversation too. is one that we have in our vicarious trauma training. <laughs> which has yes. been the most popular course over the past year. It's a brilliant course. And it's great because mm. it's great that workplaces are acknowledging, the, as you said, the collective trauma that we have been through. 
and coming at it from an approach of how do we build resilience? How do we build emotional fitness? How do we move forward beyond that rather than getting stuck in that? Um, but, and but that's why resiliency is so important, isn't it? Absolutely. The, the, the personal skills mm. that we bring to the table, even our level of maturity mm. around life, how we process things, can be a protective factor. Yeah. So yeah. what we want to do in workplaces, yeah. which is what we do with uh, major banks and, and other organizations, yeah. um, is build the, the, the personal in resiliency of individuals. Yeah. So they can... Yeah. They can... Uh, face any trials and tribulations yeah. that may come up in their daily work life. Yeah. Of course, that doesn't excuse organizations to behave in a bullish of manner, yeah. but it does prepare your staff in order to, to perform yeah. at a good level. If I can share with you some of the things that we've been seeing, as an example, one of the major banks that we worked with, they um, have an insurance arm. And so this is in Australia after the huge floods that were all down the East yeah. Coast. Their staff were obviously having very distressed callers ring up, people who've lost their houses, who've potentially mm. lost loved ones, you know, really in distress. And so their staff needed to be supported, not just a, what do I say to these people who are in really desperate states, you know, sometimes even suicidal. Um, but uh, and how do I respond to people who might be aggressive or angry? Because you know, when we all have different reactions when we're faced with yeah. with challenge. Um, but also, how do I look after myself as an employee, hearing these things? And and this is what they've been focusing on. How do we build up those resilience strategies? What tools can I use to keep myself well? And they're yeah. they're seeing fantastic results. Not only from the perspective of their staff are their loyalty to the organization has in has been enhanced mm. because they're so appreciative that their workplace cares enough to recognize how challenging their role is and give them some tools to work with. Yeah. But also at a purely practical business level, you know, they are preventing the absenteeism that they would have had. They're preventing the psychological injury claims, the HR issues, the turnover, because, mm. you know, when people are not able to cope with the challenges and the demands of their role, they're not going to show up to work. Absolutely. They're going to create problems. They're going to eventually leave. So, mm. so they've just, it's been a fantastic experience for them. Yeah. So. What is it that we're getting wrong when it comes to mental health? What are we missing? What are we misunderstanding? I think one of the very, very important things that right now we're getting wrong is we are replacing good, solid psychological principles yeah. for ideological principles. Yeah. I'll, I'll explain that. to you what I mean. Is Psychology tells us that the brain functions in a certain way. Hmm ideology is very different I want the world to be this way and then if it's not that way I will say it's not mentally healthy but if it m matches my fantasy or my yeah. ideal then I will call that good mental health but one of the basics that is of psychology a, is you have to deal with the reality yeah. of a situation yes. not the fantasy that I would like it yeah. to be like what are the facts of this matter okay now we can move forward from there yeah and what's derived from that ideological uh, approach to mental health is this idea which is a very wrong idea that anything that makes me feel uncomfortable yeah. and unwell right now that is bad for my mental health mm. whereas we know yeah. from psychology that in order to help people yeah. they have to yes. sit in the hot seat it's, it's called a hot <laughs> seat for, for a reason they have to sit yeah. in the hot seat with expert help so they can get over yeah. that and later they can feel better about themselves but in the moment yeah. it's not so comfortable it's a crucible well, it's, a, it's, is, it's very yeah and when we talk about a comfort zone you can stay in a little comfort zone I think this is yeah, what I would but, say the biggest but then you have immaturity bubble wrapping yeah. people and, like, and we don't allow them to grow put a bunch of bubble wrap around them or put them in a padded room and as long as everything stays the same then it'll be fine but that's not life no. you need to learn to be out there in the world where shit's gonna happen exactly basically. right and, and a grown person should be a grown person should behave 
should have a certain level of maturity and it shouldn't be yeah. a little kid in a big body and at yeah. the moment we're bubble wrapping so much some some individuals yeah. that they're they're throwing tantrums when they're 40 or 50 yeah. because they're they're children in a bigger body because they've never had any yeah. discomfort in their lives that hasn't been validated or justified sometimes even by so-called experts and it's creating a certain situation for them and for society that is not sustainable at the same time we don't want to go back to you know a really really hard line no. harsh approach suck it up get on with it and, no. and allow toxic in, yeah, situations yeah. and behavior i mean i don't like the word toxic absolutely it's overused but you know we don't want to go back to too extreme on the other end of the scale and either. I'm talking and I think this is what this is in reaction to. Yeah, and I'm it's talking like we don't about want to do that, so now we go too far the other way. And I'm talking about individuals the majority of individuals. I'm not talking to that small percentage of people that are really having a crisis. Yeah, of course. And when people are having a crisis, yeah. I have had many crises in my life. I don't need tough love at that moment. It does, yeah. In that moment, you don't. Yeah. But that's not my whole life. Yeah. I need tough love later. Yeah. Because we do know, finally, that from the research, we know that people that are with individuals, uh, parents, or even husbands or wife mm. that are tough on them, even though they have a mental health problem, issue, mm. they recover mm. better mm. than individuals that have overly understanding yeah, don't worry, individual. I'll do it for you, yes, I'll around them. you. They, and, and the same thing yeah. in a workplace, don't worry, you don't know how to do that, you I'll know. fix it for you. Yeah. You need, you know, multiple days off. We know once people are away for a mental health issue for a couple of days, the chances of coming back are greatly reduced. Uh, yes. The longer they're away, the chances of coming back are less. Um, so we, we need to have certain standards yeah. for people. And help them to meet those standards yeah. rather than drop them. Then lower the standards. standards. We should not yeah. lower the standards. Yeah. And it, so those are sound psychological principles that we just talked about. Yeah. Now, ideological principles that have seeped through mental health is you can have as many mental health days as you want. Okay. In fact, you should have them. No, that's hogwash. It doesn't, well, it doesn't, it doesn't help, the person help the person either. or the workplace no. or the productivity. No. <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking here about the mental health of individuals and yeah. the collective mental health. And we need to remember ideology and psychology don't always and very often don't match. Yeah. Yeah. We need to come back to the evidence. I bet evidence yeah. based, what's the science showing? Yeah. Not wishful thinking yeah. around this. Yeah. Can we create a safe space for individuals where we can feel sometimes we're gonna feel very, very uncomfortable. And that's why it's called a hot seat. It's not yeah. called a cushion cushiony seat, it's called a hot seat for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what about at the individual level? What can we do, you know, viewers watching this, what can we do for ourselves, our loved ones? Given that this is the state of the world at the moment, I mean we as individuals, we may not be able to necessarily change the whole world and the environment we're living in, the social, political, economic, like all of that, maybe I, beyond I think, the scope. But for I us, I think in, in a world, very practical sense, one of the number one things we should do if we want rapid change yeah. is introduce humor and laugh about ourselves a little bit more. Yeah. We become too serious it's about true. things and and we need to learn to see the absurd in life yes. and, and have a laugh about it, you know, and, and not take ourselves too serious. That's that's mm -hmm. the number one mm -hmm. thing. Validate people's feelings. Sorry, just on, on yeah. comedy, I think, yeah, has been comedy. so popular, yeah. uh, especially the black comedy, the dark comedy, it's because it's a, it's a counterbalance to the world at the moment. Yeah. And it's pointing out the ridiculousness of <laughs> Ridiculousness, is that the ridiculousness yeah. <laughs> of, of some of this stuff. So, I, yeah, I think that's there's a need for it. There's a desire uh, for it. People yeah. want it. But. I mean, maybe maybe you can have a joke that appropriate. You don't have to make it dirty if you don't want to. <laughs> Although some of them can be funny, it's up to you. But in the workplace, maybe you want to keep it clean, but keep it funny. Have a, yeah. a joke day. Have a humor day. Don't take yourself too seriously. Yes, <laughs> don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, take your job seriously. To 
should take your yeah. work seriously, but not yourself. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, who am I? I'm an imperfect human being. I'm going to be up and down. I'm like a yo-yo. I can be funny sometimes. I can be grumpy sometimes. I don't need and to get stuck. And you're going to be on the planet I don't need for to get a short stuck. while and then <laughs> you move on anyway. And nobody will remember anything later. So, so who cares, you know? Yeah. However, the impact that you have on other individuals, if you make them happy, if you yeah. if you add a smile to their day, yeah. what about having a smile day, right? That sounds so cheesy. <laughs> or, or may, well, we have happy hours, right? Maybe we have a happy hour in the morning, which is a smile with, between with my, with my nine coffee. and ten. And I have it with my coffee. <laughs> oh, you have to have coffee, yeah. <laughs> Whatever works for you. But you know, it's about coming up with ideas that can improve the collective mental health. Yeah. Now we say, oh, that is, you don't really understand mental health if you think that's going to cure. We're not talking about extreme cases. We're not talking about people that have been medicated up to their eyeballs that don't feel like laughing. <laughs> they only feel like sleeping. We're not talking about that. We're yeah. talking about Every the general day, population. Yeah. But I was. We are under stress. I We're was under stress. With a, a manager just the other day, and she, she said there's a a lot of the workforce really likes the idea of, sort of be kind to each other, but we need to educate them that it's not just people should be kind to me; it's that I should be kind to others as well. Exactly. That it goes both ways. You know, yes. it's not all about what everyone pandering to me. It's about me contributing to others too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to create that environment. And, and, and yeah. that's that's a very good advice. You know, are, are we? Do we take time to sit down by ourselves yeah. and answer this question? When in the last week have I acted like an asshole to somebody else? That's a very sobering question because then we find out that we're not always this perfect human being, yeah, so kind right. and so compassionate. Somebody, we can be a bit of a jerk. Yeah. And when we catch ourselves being a jerk, that's the beginning of wisdom because now we know yeah. our pattern and we can stop it next time. Yeah. We can be a little bit less of a jerk. And imagine if we all did that, we can be next week a little bit less of and a jerk to someone else. Wouldn't that be a better place to live in? And you can also understand when someone is a jerk to you, Maybe they're just having a bad day. Maybe I yeah. can give them the benefit of the doubt that I hope people yeah, yeah, would yeah, give yeah. me too. Exactly. Because it goes and they're not yeah. evil because yeah. they're having a bad day. Yeah, well, they said the wrong thing yeah. or they made a mistake or, yeah. The other thing people should do, which we don't do often enough, mm -hmm. go and get some therapy. Yeah. Like if you are not happy with your life, yeah. go and get some therapy. Yeah. If or you, if you, or if you, right? or I are not being successful in relationships again and again and again, we can blame the other person, or we can go and get some coaching or therapy. Yeah, it's a novel idea, you know. Is it but expensive? It's, yes, it's, but so is divorce. Well, so is divorce. And you know what? It's more expensive if you do get a full-blown mental illness and I put my hand up when I had my bipolar. I've wasted so many years and I lost a lot of money in those years. So don't wait for, for yeah. it to be full-blown. Find someone Spend good. some money. Find yeah. someone good yes, who works on good. what works, not on the ideology. And that's that can be uh, tricky. Find somebody that can... And you may have to pay for it. Yeah, that's a good point. The, it's the, a good investment in yourself. And I would say get somebody that can make you a little bit uncomfortable in every session. Yeah. Yeah, you need, well, that's the point. If they're too nice to yeah. you in every session, you're wasting your money. Grandma has to pay for that. Yeah, that's, that's why you have a grandma. You can go to and talk to grandma for that. But if you want a therapist or a coach, tell them yeah. to get behind you and push you a little bit. Of, yeah. yeah. And a little bit. You don't, you don't go crazy, you know, yeah. a little bit. Depends on how you're feeling on the day. Yeah. All right. I think there's some very interesting thoughts in there. I'd be keen to know what people yeah. think about that, what questions you have. Send in your comments. We read them. And uh, yeah. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Look, I know that we have spoken very frankly. I know that some things we said might not be very easy to listen to. But if they're not very easy to listen to, could it be that you need to hear them? I know that in my life, the times that I've heard things that were very uncomfortable, in hindsight, some of them were the best yeah. moments for my growth. Yeah. So 
let's keep let's keep it light. Yeah. You know, don't take yourself too seriously. Consider things. You know, keep the discussion open. Consider it. Reflect. Uh, we would love to hear your comments, and I do read the comments. We do read the comments in YouTube when you put them, and uh, and I promise we'll, we we will respond to them, and we want to have a conversation with you. Mm. We will also want to know what else do you want to what else do you want us to expound on? What do you what else do you want us to consider in more detail? Mm. And if you haven't had one of our courses in your organization, I'd say bring us in. Yeah. Bring us in. We've We're not like everybody people. else. So everyone comes with their different uh, worldviews, their different yeah. um, backgrounds, their different perspectives, their different areas of specialty in particular as well. Because so they're that, gorgeous. They're beautiful. We know that you know every workplace mm. is different, right? Yeah. They all have different needs, different strengths, different cultures. So we have a very diverse team to match that as well. Exactly right. Some need more of a tough love approach, and some need more of a gentle approach, and that's okay. We we move with that. So. And we have an international team too. Yeah. So we've got trainers from the UK, the US, Australia, Asia. Asia. So we're prepared. All right. So yes, be kind to yourself, but don't be too kind to yourself. <laughs> be kind to others, but don't be too kind to others. Get a balance. <laughs> we'll do the same. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.